recording. Looks like our sound check is good, everything else is good, so let's get started. Okay, so welcome to the webinar. My name is Eric Fellows. I'm the Digital Strategy Director over at Market Leverage. We, uh, we do, we're, a, we're an affiliate network. It's been around since 2001, and we do a bunch of digital design, for lack of a better word. We're into a lot of different things, and we wanted to go ahead and make this presentation available and have this for people because um, Google Mice is coming up very shortly. Uh, deadline if your sites are not mobile ready or mobile responsive at that time and you rely on any mobile traffic, organic mobile traffic from Google, then you're going to start seeing massive decreases in traffic because those sites will be delisted. So we'll get into specifics on that. Uh, here through the webinar. It's not going to be a super long one, probably last 30 or 40 minutes, and I'm happy to answer any and all of your questions as well. Um, if I don't answer a question right away, it's because I'm not looking at the questions panel, but we'll come to it toward the end and uh, go from there. So, so we're going to talk about we're going to answer the following questions in this particular seminar. Uh, what changes is Google making? Why are they making the changes? What is a mobile-friendly site? And I'll talk in relative detail about that. Um, will it impact desktop search results? How do I know if my site meets the mobile-friendly requirements? What are the top three newbie mistakes to avoid? And what are your next steps? So let's jump right in. So Google is launching a new mobile crawler on April 21st. Now this isn't new news. Google has been talking about mobile readiness and the impact that mobile is having on their search results uh, for several years actually. And what they're doing is on April 21st, globally, they're rolling out this new algorithm, which is focused on doing a better job crawling single-page web apps and Android apps, and probably uh, iOS, deep-linking iOS apps as well. So um, apps are becoming much, much more prevalent, and apps are uh, becoming a big deal. So. The idea here is that it's going to better expose JavaScript and CSS. So because the single page, uh, you know, the long scrolling websites that you're seeing now a lot more of, um, they have more of an app feel to them. They're coming out, be becoming more and more popular, and uh, those are heavy, heavy JavaScript pages and heavy CSS pages, and Google wants to do a better job indexing those. Also, they respond better and look better and uh, just provide a better overall user experience for people on mobile devices. So why is Google making these changes? Well, I don't think it's any big secret or surprise that mobile is, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So mobile users have outnumbered desktop users already. Um, and it's a continuing, and the trend will continue to grow. Desktop users, the yellow line here, you can see in 2011, um, mobile desktop users were uh, far exceeding mobile users. It didn't take long for that trend to reverse itself, and now in 2015, we're pretty much equal. Moving forward past 2015, it's projected that mobile use is going to just skyrocket. So globally, the number of smartphone users is going to surpass 2 billion in 2016. So this chart is showing the bar chart here are smartphone users. The yellow line is the percentage of mobile phone users, and the orange line is the percentage change. So smartphone use in the United States is very heavily saturated. Here in the U.S., when we buy a cell phone, we pretty much buy a smartphone. Globally, however, smartphone usage is much lower. However, as time passes, 
that trend uh, because smartphones are just more, much more useful and user friendly. And as their networks in different countries um, get to the point where they have evolved to where they can actually accommodate smartphone usage and uh, a lot more intensive data usage, those smartphones are, are going to be used more widely. So currently, a lot of, most of the mobile phones globally actually are not smartphones, but they're your standard basic mobile phone with SMS and that sort of a thing on it. So mobile device usage is increasing. Smartphones and tablets, uh, smartphones and tablets pushed overall time spent online by 93% in just three years. The global share of mobile web traffic has been on a steady rise. And again, it's I don't think that I'm I, I need to really fight you to, to get you to understand that mobile use and mobile phones and smart devices and, and mobile device use is just on a steady trend globally. Social media engagement on mobile devices and tablets is extremely high. So most of us are accessing Facebook on our mobile devices most of the time. Most of us are accessing apps like LinkedIn and you know our other social media, Instagram and everything else, on our mobile devices most of the time. In fact, a lot of the social media uh, sites that are out there, those properties don't even have a web-based or a desktop-based application anymore. The way that you sign up is you have to sign up through a mobile device. You download the app and you're in, um, as is the case with Instagram. So, 26% of smartphone users receive a coupon offer a deal. 34% users receive a tablet users receive a coupon offer a deal. Uh, that's the other thing that's happening is that we are redeeming offers and coupons through our mobile devices on a much more regular basis, and it's much easier for vendors and merchants to get those coupons out to us on our mobile devices as well. It's also been changing the way that um, that market and uh, consumer behavior happens, right? So a lot of us are now actually putting our credit card information into apps on our on our phones and executing purchases that way. So we're buying stuff right off of our smartphones uh, and on our tablets. Um, the other thing that that's happening is that when somebody actually searches for a product or a service on their mobile device in a local environment, so local searches, many, many times that it results in an actual purchase. So if you're a local uh, business a painter, a contractor, a restaurant, you know, things of that nature, then people who are searching on their mobile devices for your product or service, they're getting very, very quality results and they're executing purchases as a result of those searches. So it's all about user experience, guys. Are your customers happy? Or are they not happy? And, and Google looks at all of us as a customer, right? We are their customer. Anyone that uses the search engine is a Google customer and they're trying to make sure that the results that we're asking for are relevant, they're timely, and, and, and they contain what we're looking for as quickly and easily as possible. And that's how we have to respond as well to those folks who are searching for us. If we want to continue getting Google's traffic uh, and being rewarded for that, we have to think from the user perspective. It's all about user experience. So what is a mobile-friendly site? Well, um, as you can see on this Rendering on the left with the red X, that is a non-mobile friendly site. It's hard to read the contents. You have to scroll in or zoom on it. Uh, videos may not play. Um, you know, there's, it's just not as easy to consume that content versus the content on the right. You know, with the green check mark, everything is much closer in. It's, it was zoomed in on it. Content is easy for us to tap. And these bullet points over here, are important. Text is not too small to read. Links are not too close together. Images and videos are scalable. Videos are playable. And we've got the mobile viewport set. Basically, a mobile-friendly site can be built on a mobile responsive framework. 
So what do I mean by that? It's a framework by which you install your code, and it's a single code on a single domain or URL using CSS or cascading style sheets for media queries. You use typically a lot more scripting or JavaScripting for user experience. And uh, it's built using HTML5, which is the newer standard for HTML. So one URL, single content, instead of having two separate sites, a lot of people have built mobile sites, so like the m.mydomain.com, and then have a redirect. They, they, in, they insert a piece of script on the, on the page, on their main page, their desktop page, that would redirect anyone that visits that page using a mobile browser as opposed to a desktop browser over to their subdomain, their mobile subdomain. Well, that's two different websites they have to maintain, two different sets of code they have to maintain, and two wholly different user experiences. So uh, this is the recommended structure or framework for mobile friendliness. So once again, responsive web design adapts itself to multiple screen sizes using the same URL. The same page, the same content, and the same code, right? Same page, adapted screen size, adapted content, same code, same content. I just want to read or highlight this paragraph here. Having a responsive web design means that your website responds to or adjusts simultaneously to the size of the screen of various devices. A desktop computer, a laptop computer, a tablet, or a smartphone. Key features, flexible grid, flexible images, CSS queries. So flexible images are built inside the CSS and the code is um, HTML5 typically and, and uh, mobile responsive. So is this change going to impact desktop search results? And a couple weeks ago in, um, I believe it was in Munich at SMX, big conference that they have out there. Uh, Google's Zineb Bahaji, she's from the uh, Google Webmaster Trends team, said no. It will not impact desktop search results. It's explicitly a mobile change, to change to the mobile search algorithm. So how do I know if my site is mobile ready? Well, you can take the mobile friendly test. This is out on a Google property. There's the URL. You can also just Go to the search engine and look for mobile friendly tests and you'll find it easily enough. Looks like this. Actually, we can go out and take a quick test real quick. So let me just type this one in. Analyze it. And it'll come back with a yes or a no answer. Either you're mobile friendly or you're not. So that's one of the interesting things and differences about this particular algorithm is that it's very, very easy to identify whether you comply or not. It's very, very easy to identify whether you're going to continue getting traffic or be delisted or not. So let me head back to the slideshow here while that's completing. Let's talk about the three, the top three mistakes to avoid while you're thinking about making your site mobile ready. Okay. The big one here is forgetting the mobile customer. We already talked about it's all about the user experience. Well, it's all about the user experience, right? So don't forget about your customer. Don't forget about the people that you're trying to have consume your content. A lot of people are coming in on their mobile devices, and you want to make sure that they don't bounce very quickly because it's difficult to it's because it's difficult for them to consume your content due to its lack of mobile friendliness. Uh, the second one here is implementing the mobile site on a different domain, a subdomain or a subdirectory from the desktop site. And try and avoid that. And again, these are coming directly from Google. I didn't make these up. Uh, this is what Google's recommendations are. And then the third one here is working in isolation rather than looking around for inspiration. Google likes to reward inspiration. And, you know, if, if you're just your own pod out there trying to figure this thing out, you know, you may want to look outside yourself. You may want to go out and and, um, and have somebody help you figure it out if that's uh, if that's what you need. 
So don't be afraid to ask those questions. Don't be afraid to look around for inspiration. Let's see if that site came back mobile friendly. Yep. So looking at this, this site, it says awesome. This page is mobile friendly. And then Google gives us some other information about how the Googlebot sees the page. It gives you some links to resources to learn more. Um, it's, they're advertising Google Webmaster Tools, of course. And, um, you know, so you can take a look at the feedback yourself on your own site. You can test your friend sites. You can do whatever you need to do to make sure that Google is going to see your site as being mobile friendly. And if it doesn't, then you know what you need to do. Because if it came back, you failed, then these resources would lead you to uh, areas where you can get information about how to fix the problem, right? And you can actually go to the Get Started section here. I think I've actually identified that. Yeah, so this is the Getting Started section. Essentially, Google recommends that, you know, first your first step is to uh, find out if your page is mobile-friendly, so take the mobile-friendly test. If you're using third-party software, or you can start using third-party software if you're not already. Uh, third-party software would be maybe a content management system like WordPress or Joomla or Magento or you know any third-party uh, content management system. And you can make sure that that system is mobile-friendly. So in the case of a WordPress site, let's say you're running WordPress, which a lot of people are, uh, maybe you've got an older theme. Well, you can go out and find yourself a newer theme that is mobile friendly. Um, you can have it recoded if you want to and recode the CSS and bootstrap it and make it mobile friendly if you are really married to the way that it looks now. You don't want to do a redesign. Uh, so there's a number of things that you can do. Um, if it's not using a content management system, if um, if you're if you've just got a, a static HTML site and you have to FTP up and down just to make any changes, uh, then you know obviously you need to make changes to the code itself. Again, cascading style sheets and HTML5 are going to be the way to go with that. You can actually purchase pre-made HTML5 um, websites, and uh, you can go with that as well. Or again, redesign yourself or have somebody do it for you. They also are providing a number of technical specifications and documentation that you can go to for reference purposes if you want to read up on it. You can even look at mobile SEO. So if your site is already mobile friendly, you might want to run a uh, you might want to run a test to see if you need to do some work on it SEO wise because obviously you want Google to be able to find your site. Um, and you want Google to reward you with traffic and part of that is obviously making the site SEO or searcher friendly as well. So um, we actually have tools that I'm um, happy to run uh, run a free report for you if you want and see you can get a lot of information as to what things you need to do um, and and it can make recommendations for you. So we we can I'm happy to help you out with that if you'd like. And then of course get help if you need it. You know. Uh, Find a developer, find somebody, a friend, a relative, somebody who knows how to design a website and get with them and, and see how they can help you. Let's go back out here. Uh, getting started. Yeah, so there's a lot of documentation on the Google Webmaster Tools or the Google Developers uh, site for you. You can go through and have, you know, have at it. So once again, free mobile readiness consultation. We're happy to take care of that part of it for you. We can take a look at your site. We can make recommendations based on how it's set up now, what your goals are, that sort of a thing, and, and just provide you with information that you need to make a, a good decision. So if you have any desire to do that, please feel free to get with us. Um, my email is listed there, Eric F at marketleverage.com. That's direct to me. And you know we can set up a consultation for you with one of our with one of our members with one of our team members and can go from there. Uh, let me take a look at the question and answer here real quick and see what questions we need to ask. All right, uh, Claude. So Claude's got a question. I heard sites aren't going to be delisted, but just would lose their ranking. Do you know for sure which it is? 
You know, I've heard both, but uh, actually you are correct, Claude, because uh, the latest that I've seen is that um, they aren't delisted, but they are losing their ranking, which in my mind is the same thing because if you're ranked on page one and you lose your page one rank, then you may as well be delisted because no one's going to actually find you on page three, four, five, or six. They're just not digging that deeply. So, yeah, you will not lose your listing specifically or explicitly. However, people aren't going to be able to find you. In other words, um, if you do a search now on your mobile device plot, and uh, you may have seen that, but um, sites that are mobile friendly, they have the mobile friendly tag on them currently. Um, and then those sites that are not mobile friendly in the same search results will not be there after April 21st. So to me, that's like a delisting. Um, so let, let's, let's redefine our terminology or semantics here. You're not being de-indexed. You're just going to lose your rank. And uh, it's, in my mind, it's basically the same thing. All right, so uh, Claude, that was uh, yours are the only questions actually. I don't see any other questions here. So um, once again, if you guys have a desire for a free consultation, get in touch with me. If you'd like us to run your site through our, uh, you know, through our SEO testing tools, we can give you a very, uh, a very in-depth report on it, and you know, it's obligation free. There's no uh, no strings attached. I'm happy to run your site through it and uh, and then send you the report. So, having said that, looks like there's no other questions. Thank you for your time and your attendance, and have a great day.